You tuned in to Quest Convo, where we talk the culture because we are the culture. I'm Drew Soul Quest. And it's your man, Dev Devious. Dev, what's up, man? How you feeling, bro? I'm good, good. It's good to be back. How you feeling? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, man. It's, um, you know, it's been a minute, you know, a lot of bullshit here and there, sidetracking, <laughs> all that shit. But, uh, yeah, definitely. Sure. You know, it is what it is. Ain't nothing stopping the show, ain't nothing stopping the progress. We're going to talk our ish, speak our mind. We're going to speak on this culture that we know and love so well. Today on Quest Convo, we're going to talk about um, how come the masses, in the industry and a huge part of your hip-hop culture does not care about substance and lyrics anymore i'm gonna say that one more time (laughs) how come the industry the masses a lot of the hip-hop culture how come we don't care about lyrics and substance anymore Man, we gotta talk about this shit, bro. Like it's a, it's a million dollar question right there. Yeah, man. It's um, you know, at, at the end of the day, um, you know, hip hop was born from the streets. It's always been a creative art with many elements in it. Um, but it it can't it, it always started from a place of creativity. Um Everybody was trying to outdo each other. You were trying to be as creative as possible. Nobody wanted to sound like one another. Everybody wanted to be original. Um, That's where it comes from. You know what I mean? And, you know, that's one of the problems I have with it because, you know, a lot of people try to shake it off. You know, old heads want to hang on to how it used to be and all that stuff. And once again, you know, I, I I deem myself, I'm the, the old young nigga. <laughs> and I say that because I'm not your average old head. And when I say that, I mean, like, yes, obviously, I came up in that time and came up with my introduction with the, you know, in the 90s and Nas and Jay and Big, KRS One, all these pioneers of it. But I like a lot of the the newer stuff and the stuff that the younger artists are doing. I'm very open minded uh, when it comes to hip hop. I'm I'm very diverse when it comes to hip hop. I'm not the nigga that's just stuck on uh, illmatic and reasonable doubt, and I can't see shit past that. So that's why I say my shit, my 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 voice, it matters, and my opinion is a little bit more valid than the average nigga in my age group. You know what I mean? My point is that. Um, just like with any other any other thing, whether it's business or sports or whatever, everything has a foundation. And yes, things evolve and things change. But whatever lane you're in, you never get away from the foundation of where it started. And a lot of people are just getting 100 percent away from what it is and what the foundation of it is and want to create it into something completely different, but still call it hip hop. You know, I, I did a thing a while back, um, some colleagues of mine, you know, we, we did a little thing where they were kind of, you know, kind of interviewing me and, um, you know, I was just really talking about myself and, you know, where I came from when I, uh, where I started at in hip hop, my, my love for it, kind of like a little bit of the history Um, different things like that. And that was one of the points that I brought up, you know, for example, um, I think I gave like a basketball example. Okay. I was like, I don't care if it's 1985 and it's the height of Jordan doing his thing, or if it's motherfucking 2020, 2021, LeBron, um, everybody else, all these other greats, Curry and everybody, they doing their thing. The foundation of basketball is what it is. You know what I mean? Yes, the moves change. The game can evolve. Um, it can be different levels of players. 
um, different moves and things like that. But the foundation is what it is. You know what I mean? It's the yeah. niggas on the court. It's five niggas on this team, five niggas on that team. They're going against each other. You're going down the court trying to get the ball in the basket and, and score. That's the foundation right. of it. Yeah, so no matter, yeah. So no matter how young you are or how much the game changes, that's the foundation. And if you want to be in that game and excel in that game, guess what? You got to stick to the foundation. You can't get away from that. You can't go out on the court and take the ball and throw that motherfucker up in the air to the sky or throw it in the crowd and be like, Oh, I'm changing the game. I'm fine. I'm doing a different way to score and shit. No, nigga, you can't do that. You got to stick to the foundation and play the game with the foundation. Yes, you can bring your own flair and your own moves and your style and elevate different things, but you got to stick to the core of what it is. And I'm using that same analogy when it comes to hip hop. These niggas want to do everything but rap, but call that shit hip hop. You want to yodel. You want to sing. You want to um halfway uh talk off beat and all this other crazy shit and you want to still call it hip hop i'm not knocking nobody's hustle i'm not knocking any black man's hustle do your thing but people like me that love this shit born into this shit still respect this shit and look at it a certain way you can't do whatever the fuck you want and call it hip hop you can call yeah. it whatever you want. You can do whatever you want, but don't call it hip hop if it's not fucking hip hop. It's way outside the foundation of it. So yeah, I definitely agree. I agree with that. Um, yeah, and I mean, I think that's kind of where you start getting into. It. I think now more than ever, the you know rap is finally starting to kind of get into that space where other genres of music have you know really sectionalized kind of real put off to the size you know you kind of got your, your your hard metal rock then you got your heavy metal then you got your classic rock then you got your you know whatever so it's almost like these different versions these different variations so i think it all falls under the umbrella of hip-hop it's just not strictly that it's just it's an offshoot i think that's probably the word we should use so you see i think what right now what you're seeing is just like the trip hop and the, and the dream rap and the bubble gum rap and all this other stuff and the mumble rap. It's all just different offshoots um, for different sounds. Cause I don't knock anybody for trying to make it a new sound or a different sound. Cause you kind of have to do that to be able to, you know, do it. I think, and I think there's negative examples of that. And I think it's good examples of that Kanye being a, a good example, you know, of just experimentation and trying to take other elements of music as well as trying to make, you know, new hip hop from, you know, whatever it is, whether it's old hip hop, um, other genres of music, just pure imagination. So I think it, it, it all kind of comes down to preference at this day and age now, because that's really what it is. It's, I think it's a lot more nuanced, you know, when you really start to think about it and look at a lot of stuff that goes into, you know, why you want to say, well, why don't people care about lyrics or anything like that? So you got to definitely look and read in between the lines. And, and I think when you start doing that, you you kind of see a lot more than what you think you would, you would see. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, for example, with uh, I just give a quick example, like say Juice World song. OK, Lucid Dreams. That was a huge hit. So would you consider that hip hop? No, nah, I wouldn't consider it. Uh, you know, true hip hop, nah, not at all. But can I see the hip hopness? I guess, or whatever words you want to say to it, you can you can say that because I mean, realistically, where else you gonna put it? You know, because uh, it's it's not it's not crossover, so it ain't just straight <laughs> pop. You know, the, the white folks ain't gonna just be buying it or or supporting it in droves. And then you know, like I said, he, he black, he a nigga, so. Where where are you gonna put that? You're not gonna see that on you know the country station. You're not gonna see that on the classical station. So I think by virtue of him being black and just you know him making music towards you know and then not being a defined okay this is 
pop or just define this is rock or anything like that. Like, yeah, it's really another place to really put it. And now that's when you got to start putting it in the offshoot kind of categories. Yeah. And, and see that, and that's kind of like where we at with it too, because it is such a gray area. Just like what, what you was, what you just said, like, where will we put it? Because it's not really another genre. It's like, it, it's, it, it's pop it's R&B and it's hip hop, rap, you know, whatever you want to call it. And it's right. like, it ain't nothing really kind of like in between. So it is hard to categorize, you know, some of the music. And I get that. Um, sometimes I get to a point where, um, I don't know, you almost just want to <laughs> just call the shit like music. <laughs> Like, yeah, it ain't no motherfucking yeah. genre or category. It's just motherfucking. Right. You know, you want to get to that point, but it's not structured like that when it comes to streaming services and different shit like that. And you looking up some shit for categories or whatever. That's just how it is. Is You're going to have hip hop. You're going to have rap, rock, R&B and all that stuff, you know, but it's just like now it's to the point where a motherfucker got one line in the song that rhyme. Okay, we put that in the hip hop category. Damn, nigga, it's one line that rhyme. A R and B, a rock, a country singer can have one line that fucking rhymes. That don't make it right. fucking hip hop. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. But that's kind of like, you know, where that gray area that you talk about. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's almost to me. I, if it was up to me, I would put a lot of this stuff more so in the um, in the R and B um, category. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm not, and, and that's the thing. I'm not really saying that as a a bad thing or even necessarily Shay, because like once again, I like some of the stuff, but it's to me, it's just not hip. I put the shit in the R and B category. It's hard for me. Because a lot of dudes, you kind of, you got to cut through a lot of crap. It's for me personally mm -hmm. to get to somebody who is, you know, for every 10 artists that come out, you know, I got to go through that are like either okay or I don't like them at all. I might find one or two guys. Right. You know? And I just, that's kind of, that's even more frustrating because a lot of the dudes, either they, a lot of these dudes, either they take off or they don't. And then if they do take off, it's either it's it just keep branching off every way. So it's like you you got if you get to one level, you split off. And if you get to another level, you split off. And then if you get to another level, either you're gonna kind of stay at that level, at the end game level, or you might split off again. And it and it, it's just real hard because you know a lot of what you're saying, a lot a lot of that's kind of like the the movement today where you got you know you got the ride wave and you got you know the YFN Lucci and you got this guy, you got that guy and they, they all kind of like, yeah, just half singing, half rapping, half doing this. And I mean, I just look around and people love it. And I'm just like, what the hell are we listening? What are we listening to? Are we listening to the same stuff? You know? And I think that kind of just kind of goes into that first point for me of, you know, why a substance can't be in the music is because just times have changed. It's kind of like the same way how you you can probably vouch for this growing up. For you, like say a scary movie, the stuff that they show in scary movies now, there was no way possible they was gonna show none of that back in your day. They might have, you know, <laughs> started. They might have started kind of showing you a little bit of it and kind of giving you bits and pieces of it back in the day, but you know, now you got heads blowing up and you got eyes being plucked out and you got people using blow torches on people's face and all kinds of like this stuff wouldn't have been possible back in the 80s, 70s, whatever you want to call it. People wouldn't have stood for it. And it's the same thing today, I think, where you know, you're so more so your generation, they they not really willing to stand for that because they remember when the music had a, a, a element to it or a quality to it where it, you know, it just didn't seem like any any old body could just do it or just come with something. Right. Versus today, it's like 
you kind of you kind of could see the degradation of it. You know, it kind of went from just kind of being partying to, you know, I don't know. It's it's really hard to explain. You kind of seen the degradation kind of go down. You kind of seen the quality slip. You kind of start to see more and more and more over time that people was, you know, each kind of year they start going by, you start to see people willing to accept a little bit less and a little bit more and a little bit less and more and less and less and less and less and less, you know, until the point where we are where we at today. So, and you see, it's almost like you could write a, a damn paper on this a dissertation because, like I said, yes. there's so many. I might do that so shit. many. <laughs> it's so many loose ends that you could you could look to. They kind of got us here, you know. I think uh, people kind of like Ludacris. I think he kind of played a part into it because he kind of introduced that kind of fun kind of you know element, kind of you know have fun with it element, kind of don't take it so seriously element to it where it's like, he kind of made it seem like, okay, you ain't got to just be this extra hard, hard dude or, you know, hard. I don't got to shoot niggas and, and, and sell dope and gang bang on my music to make successful music or have records or something like that. And then, you know, you look at somebody like soldier boy, you let somebody like him come out. And for, like I said, and that's kind of the benefit of, our our generation, we was able to reach a lot more than what y'all was able to ever dream about reaching at any one given time. Because the internet started to be a big factor in why a lot of people was big anyway. Yeah. You see Drake, you see Drake come in. He started doing that kind of soft. I never thought that that would stick. I never thought, I thought they was going to run him off. I thought, you know, he might be able to kind of have the ladies or whatever. But you, you, like I said, over time, you kind of just see these little things appear in the game. They kind of just let the bar kind of sink a little bit lower so we can keep going. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, – those are some good points. Um, uh, a good example of, like, what you said, like, with Soldier Boy, he, he is definitely – and once again – with all this shit that I be saying, you know, I'm going to feel like I'm going to feel how I'm going to feel. I'm going to talk my shit. I have, I'm entitled to my opinion, just like anybody else is. And just, and I like to put that disclaimer out there. First of all, I don't hate on life is harder than a motherfucker. So I don't knock nobody hustle. Um, I'm happy for all the black men that are getting this motherfucking money, whether it's, music i like don't fuck with whatever the fuck you doing rap not rapping yodeling copycatting with all the shit that Mm y'all niggas doing y'all are getting this money so right hey do do your thing continue to get your money because yes it's it's you know i don't fuck with it a whole bunch of motherfuckers feel the same way i do but hey it's a lot of motherfuckers that that, that's you know that's fucking with it so it is what it is so i always put that disclaimer out there get get y'all money for sure exactly. so, you know at the, end, but, at the very end of the day right yeah i don't want I mean? you i don't want you to not i don't want you to not get your money or whatever because i mean somebody out there it's an audience out there for you yeah so. because everybody you know and and i understand that everybody is not as um passionate as i am like i said i'm right. a true connoisseur a fan i live this shit was born into this shit. So I'm a passionate motherfucking fan. And I do have to understand. And that was in my, you know, around my time and even with new motherfuckers. It's it's some youngins that are passionate about the music and and really are into it and listen to the beats and the flows and critique it and break it down. But um, there's a lot of motherfuckers that they don't give a fuck. What, whatever I can shake my ass uh <laughs> at the club with whatever the fuck the radio and the powers that be pushed down my motherfucking throat and play a thousand goddamn times a day and make me like that's that's what I'm fucking with you know those right. are like you're on the surface they don't give a fuck they ain't listening to the lyrics they don't give a fuck about none of that shit can I can I fucking twerk to it um can I shake my ass at the club with it and, and and that's it you know they write on the surface where they don't give a fuck about it so obviously that level of fan yes they don't give a fuck about no substance or if lyrics matter and all that bullshit but i'm a passionate right. motherfucker about it so i'm gonna have my thing um 
but uh yeah it's it's a lot of different factors man um you know it kind of goes into like what you said going begin back which you, you mentioned soldier boy that is, he he's really kind of like when you really started kind of seeing the shift you know because soldier boy was the internet like all the shit he talked now Nigga, I'm the king of the internet. What no motherfuckers on, on YouTube before me as far as doing the music and this, this, this. It's a lot of truth to that. Truth to that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? He kind of really, you know, it, it's good and bad. It's great for him because he exactly. made millions. But Pioneered off of, right. Yeah, but it was bad for, you know, the music. That's kind of like when it shifted. You know what I mean? Because... It was the, the Internet is one of those things when it comes to, to music in general. The Internet is the gift and the curse. Uh -huh. I say that and when it's the gift because it gave access to everybody. I don't have to right. go to the fucking recording studio no more. I can be in my fucking room. I can be on my phone. I can be in my closet and fucking record and get that shit out to the world. I don't have to have a record deal. I don't have to have an A and R. I ain't I got to get a demo out like that. Yeah, none of that I shit. I can yeah. record that shit um, right now and have it out to the world in the and hour. Just sit there and float. Yeah. So that kind of open up the the floodgates for everybody. Anybody that thought they might want to kind of rap or thought it was cool or do music, here we go. I, I can do it. And put it out, and somebody gonna fuck with it. Somebody's gonna like it. Where, where before that, before the internet, it was a process. You had to go through a process. You had to go through, so to speak, gatekeepers and motherfuckers. That if you weren't a certain level or a certain level of quality, or you didn't have a a certain look or or whatever about yourself, you weren't getting in the door. You know what I mean? Right. So it was kind of like a good and a bad thing because it was, like I say, it was good for a lot of people because they made a lot of money, but then it was kind of, um, you know, bad for music itself because it did, it just brought down the level of, of quality. That, that's kind of like, in my opinion, where I saw the, the quality shift change. You know what I mean? I'll add, I'll add on to that. Um, when you talk about the internet and when it started getting introduced to music, um, I mean, the whole, I think, uh, once again, reading in, yeah, reading in between the lines, um, you have to look at the, the whole record industry had to shift, not just even hip hop, but just, you know, music in general, when the internet came into, you know, it was here to stay and it became a player, you, the whole, they had to reorganize their whole recording industry you know, just to, to make money, to get paid, to pay the artists, to pay themselves, you know, things like that. So you, you really start to see a lot of things become real metric driven. So like with Soulja Boy, case in point, the ringtones, right, that was a big, big thing back in the day. That was a, there was a lot of money made off of that. Um, and then you start to see music go from being really album driven to single driven. You know, when we had that problem, I remember that that whole period of like I want to say around 2007 to like 2010 is somewhere in there where, you know, they you got all these hot singles and then the album and then the album kind of just jumped, you know, and you seeing a lot of, you know, pumping them guys, they kind of get their 15 minutes or whatever. They get the little single out. The single might go double double uranium, you know, but the album don't <laughs> sell nothing. But, you know, that single have stand power and it just, you know, it's it'll last 10 years, whatever. But, you know, you don't even remember the album that it came from, things like that. So I think that kind of played a part into why the music kind of dumbed down to where it is. You know, I think people kind of started making their music to um, more money slash profit driven kind of way. You know, so it. it, it it's really hard for me to explain because I, even me talking about it, I love it and everything like that, but it's like, I haven't been able to dive deep into it because I don't even know where to start because that's almost like you have to start a whole nother type of 
course, some type of economic, something like it's not just we're not going to say just in the realm of hip hop. That's why I'm kind of hesitant to really kind of get into it, because that's, you know, you got to have an MBA to get down to the nitty gritty like that. When you really think about rap music and the shit that was going on and the music that was out and the artists that came out, you kind of got got to go back right at the beginning of the 2000s. If you really think about it, right at the beginning of the 2000s, that's when it just really, e- even niggas that weren't doing the internet shit. And, and, and like, for example, um, and I hate to say that, you know, because because I'm a Master P No Limit fan. Do not get right. it wrong. I am a Master P No Limit fan. Now, when I, you know, 20 years later listening to it, a lot of it I still fuck with. The Master P uh, projects, all that shit. Um, ghetto dope to this day. That shit, that shit hard. <laughs> Um, right. Ghetto Dope is hard. See, Murder shit was hard. Mystical shit. Mia X. Um, a lot of that shit still dope. Um, some of that other shit I, I listen to now, like with Silk and like Silk <laughs> was the first blue face. <laughs> right. OK. <laughs> that nigga was. Yeah, he 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 he, he really. Like, I, I don't even know, you know, Blueface, I know he a younger nigga. I don't even know if he really listened to Silk Deshaka or any of that shit. But I'm telling you, if you listen to Silk, that's where Blueface got his style from, whether he okay. fucking admitted or not. He was rapping like that. Now, at the time, yeah, I was like, it was just, you know, No, no Limit was the shit. They was dropping music all the time. I liked all the shit. I was like, it's no limit. I don't give a fuck what it is. No what limit. Is, they, right. they the fuck, they running shit. But, you know, that's kind of like when, when it started because it's still, you know, they shit was obviously was not the most lyrical. We coming from the end of the 90s where Jay is starting to come in. Um, you know, Nas is doing his thing. Buster is doing his thing. So you coming off of, right off of that, into you know your no limits and your cash money right at the tip of 2000s and, and shit like that you coming off a of red man this is all high quality substance field super lyrical field music you know what i mean and that's all of that shit that was coming out at that time it was not not saying it wasn't all bad or wasn't all good but definitely lyrically it was not high quality you know it just it just is you know it is what it it is um i mean some of it was but a lot of it was not that's kind of like when it you know kind of like when when i if i had to try to pinpoint the exact time that's kind of like where i would um you know kind of go to that that's you know, it is it is what it is. I know motherfuckers gonna talk shit about it, but that's you know that's how I uh, feel well, about it. Like, I, like I don't he, blame you. Yeah, like a, so. For example, I think so. Jay Z Black album. What was that? Two thousand three. I think the Black album. Yeah, two thousand three. Yeah. So, you know, the famous line, uh, Talib Kweli, he referred to it all the time. Where that nigga, you know, Jay spoke on that shit. He was like, so the line go, uh, what was it? Uh, so if if skills, he say, if skills still sold, uh, what he say, lyrically, I'll be top Yeah, you, you know what I mean? So he kind of spoke on it, then, on, on, on it then. Like, yeah, it's not about I'm seeing the shift. It's not about skills no more. It's about um, this and that. It's about personality, who looked the flyers, who talking, you know, talking the right. slicker shit. And that was always, you know, big elements in hip hop. It's always been, you know, who's the best niggas been fly since shit. 80s, 80s and 90s niggas was trying to be fly right. and talking about the money and the and the cars and all that shit. So that part has been there. But you know, that Jay was like one of the first motherfuckers that kind of spoke on it. Um, it just is what it is. I, I just hate to see it 
go to that. Obviously, you still got your people out there, but it's like nowadays when you talk about it, our uh, motherfuckers that still got flow. The the main three motherfuckers you talking about, or, or the, you talking about the your Griselda crew and niggas mentioned uh, Kendrick and Cole. You know, without right. even thinking, those are like the main three. And outside of that, it's still people that are lyrically inclined and you can tell that really care about the music and care about what they present and they trying to impress you with their lyrics but it's not a it's not a lot at all you know what i'm saying the, when when motherfuckers have that general conversation those are the main people that they talk about and that's you know it that shouldn't sad, be sad yeah to piggyback off of what you say though um about you know the caring about the music i think that's a big part of it too um, because it also, you know, I think when you kind of start seeing the way <laughs> the shift in the music and just listening to some of it, you know, not every single one of them, but a lot of them, it just kind of, it started getting to the point where it just seemed like it was just a get rich quick scheme for a lot of cats. You know, a lot of cats just, they, they didn't really want to rap. They just wanted everything that rap could get you slash everything that rap represents, you know, and they just saw, you know, it was something that you could do. You, I mean, you ain't necessarily, you ain't got to get no nine to five. You ain't got to go and punch the clock, so to speak, every day or something like that. You can just wake up, just throw some, throw some words on the pad, say it. And then, you know, the chicks or whatever going to come around and you're going to get in a fancy car and you're going to put some nice clothes on. So I think that's kind of really what it came to. A lot of dudes just grew up was like, Oh, well, you know, let me try and do something and try and see if I can do something. And then I think that's kind of where it came into that period where, you know, you try to see everybody trying to outcatch each other, you know. And then that's when you start seeing the the more beat driven music, the more uh, the more party, you know, music who can stay number one on the chart, you know, with this party hit from our who, who can make the biggest hit, who can get the, the most features, you know, who can stay around the longest. You know, because if you think about a lot of the dudes who stayed around, like Lil John, he didn't can't keep on making music. You know, he probably knew his himself. Like I can't keep doing this forever. <laughs> like I could probably, yeah. probably got like you know, I probably got like three, four good albums of this, and I got to and I got to go on somewhere else. You know, you know, Walk the Clock is another one where he like, you know, I got something where I, you know, I can't do this for too long. I got to do what I need to do and get off. Versus you got somebody like Jeezy or Gucci or something like that. They actually have a fan base. They actually have, you know, a solid list of music they can put out. So you can tell that they care, but they kind of care in a different way, if that makes sense. They actually enjoy what they do and on top of, you know, trying to do all the other stuff that I told you, the elements to you know, being flashy or trying to be as catchy or something like that, in addition to caring what they put out. So it's, it's you know, it's a lot of different levels to it. You, and you, it shows, though. It shows in dudes' careers. It shows in what they're able to accomplish or what they're able to do. Um, so it, it's really, like I said, I, it just turned into a, a real big talent show slash kind of, you know, I can I can get rich quick off of this and I ain't got to worry about nothing. If I can right. just get this, if I can get the right beat, if I can just put this little song out and everybody hear it, I'd be all right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Um you know, streaming that that goes, you know, obviously talking about the internet thing. Um, it's a lot of people um feel the same way I do if with the streaming. Streaming was the best, well, another thing as far as music go, the best slash worst thing ever, because streaming, yes, um, you have access to all kind of damn music from every genre, all the shit you can think of, you got instant access to it. So Yes, that's a great thing. But then um, on the other side of things, for the artists, that's why so many people are embracing going independent or whatever, because now for the artists, y'all ain't getting paid. Nobody right. really knows if you fucking going platinum or how much your shit is really making. Nobody really knows that shit. You know what the powers that be in these streaming services are fucking telling you. Your right, shit could exactly. have been, gonna have a billion streams. And then motherfuckers say it's stream five hundred thousand, and here's your cut. We we have no <laughs> we we have no scale. We have really no true insight. Even when you talk to the niggas that's really in the industry, 
and, and all these motherfuckers that should know nobody can really give you a straight fucking answer or the or science to it you know what i mean so that kind of fucked up music but um more more so like i said for the artists but then also um just getting to the social media the internet things like going back to soldier boy um that nigga was he was like a character you know what i mean he was like a character he had personality talking mad shit and you got all this access you can talk all this shit show your personality on a daily basis where no artist could ever do that before artists before we will see them niggas every once in a while on a video, every once in a while in the magazine, every once in a while in a um interview or some shit like that. But it wasn't a everyday access thing. It's like now more so that that's why you have so many rappers that um, you know, get on these reality shows or trying to get into acting or whatever, because you pretty much you're you're a personality these days before you're an actual artist. I've seen motherfuckers, they took that, they not even an artist, but because they got a such such a big social media following or because these motherfuckers are swaggy and funny as hell, we're going to make this motherfucker do a song because, because he has such a huge following, the song is automatically going to be a success. You can't even get, you know, not saying that, that that even really matters anymore, but you can't even get a record deal today unless your social media following is crazy unless you're a personality um like a motherfucker on your social medias and you swaggy as hell and you got all these different followers uh record companies not even looking at you not even fucking with you if you don't have that first you know what i, I mean know so, that. that's crazy I, I never even thought about yeah that or knew that yeah that's that's how they get in the, that's how they get in the deal that's the the the, the main premise um the main uh foundation now you go to a record label trying to get a deal okay what's your social media looking like how many followers you got have you went viral have you done this blah 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 there's no more uh a and r's and artist development and, and all that other shit you you know that's why artists be like that it's like i've done all the work to get my social media up because i know that's what it takes so um yeah, I, I want this amount of money because y'all just pretty much the pretty much the only reason you need a um, a record company now is more so for um, distribution. Right. You know, obviously, they have, um, you know, ways to distribute your shit a little bit more than just trying to do it on your own. But outside of that, yeah, you, you can mm-hmm. shoot your own videos. You can make yeah. your own music in your own studio. All that, so, yeah, exactly. It yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. That's yeah. just. I just think that um, I think also another point to look at, I think it's not so much that, you know, it's not so much more that lyrical rap or anything like that's not there. It's definitely there if you know where to look. It's, yeah. it's more so the the focus industry, industry-wide is, you know, on the, on that. You know, I don't know what kind of changed after a while, you know, but it seemed like back in the day, everybody could have a voice. That's kind of what I noticed when I was younger, you know, Mm -hmm. everybody got me, there was more chances, you know, you, you know, um, groups like brand Nubian and main source and, uh, all those, all those groups, it just seemed like they, you know, the far side, it seemed like they had just as much of a chance to be on the radio and had a voice heard as much as you could hear a, a Mob Deep or a Wu Tang or a Biggie or something like that. And I don't know what really changed that, but it's like also like over time, you know, you could you could get a good balance. You could also you could get the music where it's like okay, you're getting something that's you know fulfilling to you. It's, it's good to you. It's good music, but you know it ain't just got to be this, but if you feel a certain type of way, you can still go over here and you can get, you know, like I call cold weather hoodie music, you know, stuff like that. You can get the Mob Deep or the Twisted, you know, all that. And they all had their equal footing versus now and over time, it kind of transitioned solely over to this direction where it's kind of like 90% of the, like I said, all the ignorance or the shooting and killing or the partying and the drugs or whatever it may be versus the 
the lyrical, like they kind of just make room for, you know, one or two of them at a time if you even get them, which obviously now we got Kendrick and Cole. But them is really going to be the only two, like, straight lyrical <laughs> dudes you're going to hear on the radio, period. Um, and even though that there's plenty of other artists who are, you know, they're like you say, uh, I'm, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say if I turn on my local radio station in Columbus, Ohio, I doubt that we're going to just see, uh, who is it, Benny the Butcher, Griselda. I mm-hmm. doubt that they're, that they're going to be on the radio as much, you know, versus somebody like Kanye. He kind of transcended music and all that. So he don't got to rap about all a whole bunch of ignorant stuff, but, he, you know, he don't matter. He's so big. So you can't really count dudes like him, Jay-Z. I call them, you know, the legacy dudes who they made their name and they did everything they're going to do. It's, it's just a focus on that, like almost a complete focus. And, you know, you can't even say it's almost like you can't even deny it. If I try to tell them, like, hey, why don't you do this? It's like, what you what are y'all really going to tell me? There's going to be a good reason to see, like, hey, this we just got all this focus on all this, you know, mostly negatively influenced music. Versus there's plenty of other music that you can choose from, but you just don't choose to either focus on it or you don't want to focus on it. It's, it's got to be either one of the two. Yeah, uh, a hundred thousand percent. That is what you just said. Buttoned up, the, buttoned up all all this shit. Like what you said. That has been the premise. That has been the foundation of my platform for years now. Balance, one word, balance. That's all that a true music fan really wants. Because just like you said. Back in the day, Public Enemy, Brand Nubian, Jungle Brothers, uh, X Clan. Then you had your motherfucking two shorts and your NWAs and your two live crews, and it was all fine. Let you know, and that's where the industry got it fucked up. You know, um, you know, people have their conspiracy theories. Um, I, I kind of shit eat into it a little bit myself but obviously we know the industry is ran by white men powerful rich white man black man even though we control the cool and control the music and everything else obviously we know we're not running the music industry right motherfuckers that signing uh checks are the rich powerful white man so they know that they this is a huge outlet for us and black people, we listen to everything the artists and entertainers say and do and everything else. So um, instead of instead of having that balance, having some good and some positive, along with some ratchet and some hood shit, we're just going to dumb it down and we're going to create one agenda, one sound, one message, be a ratchet, ignorant, ghetto ass motherfucker and get this money. That's yep. pretty much the one message, the one sound that we're going to push, that we're going to hear all the time, that we're going to see all the time. And that's not life. Life is balanced. Right. Life is good and bad. Life is intelligent. Life is ignorant. Life is ratchet. Life is 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 wonderful. There, there's a lot of different um, uh facets when it comes to life and when it comes to uh music and subject matters that you can talk about and like you said back in the day that's what it was i could um be nasty with these little girls and and be a ratchet ass hood motherfucker listening to nwa and too short and too live crew and all them motherfuckers and then i could also get some soul food and some knowledge from Goody Mob and Public Enemy and Brand Nubian actually teaching me some shit, getting up my education, teaching me about my black history and what it, what it is to be black and some of the things my forefathers did and what it is to be a real black man and a true black man. I had that balance that could help me, you know, get navigate through life a lot better versus just saying, you be an ignorant, ratchet ass, hood ass motherfucker and get these money and fuck these bitches. That's all, nigga. That's hey, do that all the time. That's all the only message nah, we yeah, can push. You can't do all they're not giving these young minds that are being molded that ain't been through no shit yet 
a lot of them need that balance to help navigate through some shit and, and give them right. a give them a give them a choice. The, you know, when you talk to when you say this to these industry motherfuckers, that they, they give you them bullshit ass answers. Well, that's what the people want. You know, that's what they want to hear. You don't fucking know because you don't give us a choice. All you do is push one fucking sound, one fucking agenda, one fucking subject. So how do you know that's what the people want if you're not giving them another fucking choice or another option? You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, that fucks yeah. you. It is, but I feel like it's been like that uh, for years. And I think in a way, the internet kind of helps combat that. But at the same time, you know, the the industry has already taken hold. So you already know what you're getting and what's going to what's gonna make ways, what's going to be acceptable, what kind of music you have to shoot for to make or anything like that. So yeah, it's, 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 it's already, it's kind of already set in stone. And, you know, unless some major changes happen within the industry, you might not see a lot of changes like that happen. Yeah. No, we, we, we probably won't. Like I said, they, they, you know, they're making crazy money now. Um, you know, I just have to focus on the positive being the diehard hip hop person that I am. Um, I have to look at the positive hip hop is the number one genre in the world. It has been for a while now. Um, and it's just like the people like us that have a platform, you know, we just have to be responsible and and um showcase that balance so give the people a choice because there's only going to be a few platforms out there that are going to give people a choice and let them know that it is you know some other shit out there you know the alternatives yeah you know what i mean so you know it, it, it is what it is man so you just gotta be careful because you know yeah we might we might you know everybody might like might not like that they might they might they might be like well what you you know why you got to be, why you got to be so hopeful and, and inspiring all the time, you know? Right. Why can't we just, why can't we just stay down here and just pop heels all day and not go to work? <laughs> right, so, exactly. Yeah. And I'm just, you know, and I'm just like, why would you, why would you do that? Right. Why you want to pop, you know? So we going, we, we just have to, you know, it, it, us and others like us, we just have to just do what we can and let people know. Hey, we we got other stuff out here. Hey, it's other stuff. It's another way of thinking. You know, I just think one way or look at things one way. Yeah, so it's, it's it's you. It's a time and place for everybody, and I think a lot of people forget that it's a time and place for everything. And when we say it's a time and place for everything, that means everything literally. You know, not just every all time and all place is just this one thing. Nah, that's not how it should be. And you know. It'll 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 show because even even still people will get tired of it eventually. If people get tired of it, and you have to you have to change. You have to redo something, you know. So mm -hmm. everything everything has a way of equaling and balancing itself out. Yeah, yeah, and like I said, it's still you know it's still hope. I mean, it's one reason why um, you know, like you say, it's always go goes back to Kendrick and Cole, but they are the most popular rappers at the end of the day, even though they're not on the radio 24 seven, all that stuff, people love them. <laughs> you know even, what I mean? Even the, even the ratchet, ignorant rappers that y'all love to play all day, every day. Yes, they love them. So, so that speaks that, that is saying something because both it's of them are way. some, yeah, both of them are some lyrical substance filled Negroes <laughs> all day. Oh, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So it's, you know, it'll, the, the, the truth and, you know, what's real will always shine through, I believe. It'll yeah. Always, you know, so there will always be some kind of savior. They always want to make somebody a savior. So I think there will always be a savior or some type of person in that role who at least lets you know, like, hey, this is still, I still represent what this is all about and what it's supposed to be and what it should be. Mm-hmm hands down concrete so i think that'll always that'll always be there no matter how twisted or how upside down it get yeah yeah for sure so yeah man it is what it is um you know definitely as always i'm glad we was able to talk our shit today um get our thoughts out there to the world you know let them let them know what uh 
real niggas and, and real hip hop connoisseurs over here um, believe and when what and speak some truth to them. So, um, you know, as usual, man, we'll be back soon. Um, it's good talking to you. Like, yeah, always. yeah, yeah, always, always. Um, so yeah, y'all have been listening to Quest Convo, where we talk the culture because we are the culture. I'm Drew Soul Quest, and I'm Dev Devious. And uh, you know, y'all stay tuned. You know, you already know we um the podcast culture73.com, all of that is uh here alive and well, and it's always about the hip hop over here all day.